Good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. It's Monday, April 29th. It's a uh, call to order at 641. First order of business is uh, approved the minutes of 42219. Uh, motion on the minutes. A motion made. I'll second. And seconded any discussion. Here, no discussion. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Old business recap annual town meeting. Well, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I guess the budget is the big. I guess it depends on what chair you're sitting in. Right. Scott. So, if I could, Mr. Chair, I think the the. Uh, <laughs> message coming out of town meeting was two things. One, zoning bylaws are really, really complicated. And for folks who um, don't necessarily participate in the entirety of the zoning process, it's a complicated process. It reaches across the breadth and the area, the entire area of the community. And to have that uh, changes uh, litigated at annual town meeting uh, can be rife with its own problem right that said I would suggest that as the planning board continues to meet over the course of an annual calendar people who are of interest and who can be affected by or are frankly curious should attend those meetings now that said Annual town meeting is primal right. democracy. Right. And it is the way things are voted, approved, disapproved, debated in this community and many communities in New England. With that, if we continue to have that kind of um, deep dive after a board or committee does a, a, an annual a year's worth of work, it's rife for um, short selling that effort. Yep. Secondly, the budget, if I could, Mr. Chair. The budget entirely is predicated on a $200,000 override. That override question is on the ballot. That's this Saturday. That's not necessarily nor exclusive to general government. However, it's a statement about the community's commitment to education at the elementary school specifically. Thank you, Scott. David? Uh, I think you kind of summed it up. I you know, it was an interesting meeting from a parliamentary perspective. Good point. You know, because of the we uh, tackled some things we hadn't tackled before. Correct. From a procedure standpoint. So that's always kind of interesting. But, um, <clears throat> you know, I guess that I just reiterate the point that, you know, either way, show up and vote and have your, have your say in it, you know, and we'll see where we go from there. Good point. <clears throat> and, and as far as town meeting, there, when there was, there was points during the town meeting, the, one thing when you are on the stage, it's kind of like you're the catcher and you're looking at the baseball field. You're, point, the, uh, yeah. you're, <laughs> you're, you're the only one that sees where everybody's playing. Um, so you're, you're actually looking at the second baseman, shortstop, center field, the left fielder, and you're actually, you're, you're one person that's actually seeing those. If you think about it, your teammates, is everybody's facing towards home plate. So they're not necessarily see everybody. Mm -hmm. So um, now that has its advantages and its disadvantages. And I, like what I tried to explain at town meeting is that this year up on stage was a little bit more difficult than some years in the past. We, me, me in particular, I'll speak for myself, could not hear yeah. Yeah, the, the conversation that was going on the audio was on, definitely on, on the floor. Um, and we talked to FCAT about that. FCAT is, is deeply, deeply concerned 
Um, in the past, we have worked a microphone, a small little speaker, and behind us, that helped. That wasn't there this year because they they brought in two new, two newer speakers, and right. that thought they were they were professional speakers. And they they thought they were going to be able to handle the thing. We didn't hear. Right. So, um, as I tried to apologize at town meeting, if it there was a look of if somebody saw something that they didn't like people talking on the front stage or other people were talking or whatever it, it I apologize for that it wasn't out of disrespect for anybody talking it was purely because we're trying, we were trying to, to understand what was being said because yeah. I could I I for one could not understand and I think it would be Scott or David summed it up by when he explained it to Chris from the FCAT that it sounded like, oh, like if you ever peanuts. watch the old Charlie Brown <laughs> things it sounded like Charlie Brown's Parents That's talking, right. a, mute, a muted horn. Exactly right. right. Um, and, and, and so that, that's exactly. very unfortunate. Exactly. <laughs> One thing I did notice, and in, in our from our vantage point, is and and it's and it's very it's, it's a difficult thing um, because there's nothing that you can do. Town meeting got into the technical aspects of a meeting that's run by. Um, and we're not run by Robert Rule, we're run by a thing called town meeting, meeting time. time. Yep. Most, most town meetings in New England are run in that manner. Some are run by Robert Rules, but most meetings are run by town meeting time. Okay. Um, so it has all its, so there's right ways, just like we don't adjourn at the end of a meeting, we vote to dissolve. Right. Does it matter? Yes, because if you don't dissolve, um, there's le le legal points that sure. someone could challenge it. Yeah, right, right. So we we try to do things correctly. Um, sometimes by trying to do things correctly, it may um, be confusing to people in the audience. Um, I, and again, I apologize for that, but it, it's not done because we want to trick somebody or or. But in, in matter of fact, we had some people that came to our meeting. We said, hey, you may want to go to the town meeting and pull out a meeting at town meeting time. Yep. And I'm happy to say the town still has its two copies that, yep. that we bought to put inside of there. Mm -hmm. So there are two copies if you ever want to read town meeting time. Yep. If you have nothing to do, they <laughs> are in the they are in the they are in the yeah, library. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, so I, I, that and, and I felt bad for Mike because Mike Mike's first meeting as a moderator. Yeah. And I can tell you, the last time I had to look in my town meeting time book was when Walter Strozik was around, because Walter Strozik was a master at that stuff, and he, he made all of us better because he knew that stuff, so we, we needed to know that stuff. So we, we have never divided, we have never divided a... Uh, a motion before I'd love to see what the attorney general because now after town meeting what happens is that all the all the minutes need now go to the attorney general and that's what Sherry as the assistant town clerk and Wendy as a town clerk have been probably working on today is putting all those minutes together and they take all that and they ship it to they ship it to the attorney attorney general office for review I love to see when it comes back um, what's going to happen? Uh, my no guess, yeah. my guess is, we'll probably be revisiting that. Yeah. Um, that point. As to what Scott said about about um, um, zoning bylaws, we all need just to do a better job of trying to explain um, why why on our why something's being changed or yeah. a proposal. We'll, we'll work harder on that all all of us will work harder and and sometimes when you when you've been working on it for a year or longer it's perfectly obvious right. to you right. you're close right yeah and and some and sometimes um, somebody that's seen it for the first time may not have an opportunity to un, to, to have your or have the breath of knowledge so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll work at that we'll see what come what comes back I, I would think um, I would like to thank everybody that made a presentation, um, those that stayed through the meeting, that came to the meeting, 
And they also um, may be um, some that didn't attend the meeting, didn't watch the meeting, missed a very um, important point that was brought forward by the uh, 300th committee. 300th committee had originally had a, a very small stake from the town a couple few years ago. Then last year they had asked for $100,000 and we had problems with, uh, we had to go back, um, so there, that money was reduced to $65,000 um, at, at a town meeting. So they had $65,000 to spend on the, uh, the celebration. Well, the, the 300th committee went outside and they, they raised a significant amount of money through donations, through solicitation of businesses and, and corporations and of private individuals. So at town meeting, Tom, Tom Zemnowski, who was a chair, uh, came back and said that the, they will be turning back to the town $53,000 out of the 65000 that they originally got. Yep. Um, I, that is what the committee was always intending to do, um, uh, is to raise the money. Um, that's what they had said all along. Um, I know there was many people in the community that were very concerned, is to probably use is a word that I could use, that we are spending so much money on a, on a celebration when we had so many other needs. I, I would just like to, again, relay that they turn back 53,000 out of that 65,000. So they were very, very careful and with how the money was spent. I don't think we went for not wanting something to be done, um, but they, um, that's why we had weekends. So porta potties that were rented for the parade could be used for the barbecue, could be used for uh, the other things that, that were going on. So, so the tents could be, instead of just being used once, the tents were used two or three times at this, you know, over a weekend. So, and again, but I think that's how our town is. Our town has always been pretty frugal and, as, and it shows as we are the sixth or seventh lowest um, tax rate in the state. In, in the, uh, yeah, the, the Franklin County. Yeah, yeah. And if anybody wants to go look at what some of the surrounding taxes are, they just have to go back to the you know, www.masslive.com and look up uh, 100 most expensive um, sure. statewide, statewide tax rates. And a lot of our neighbors mm -hmm. are there. Um, so I, I, again, I, I think that needed to be said. But it was, it was a good town meeting on, on, on the whole. We have some, some additional work to do, and um, the budget that was passed was based purely on a $200,000 override. So I would encourage everyone to vote uh, no matter, this Saturday, no matter how you vote, yes or no, but it's important to, to vote mm -hmm. and move on. Okay, anything yeah, else, Scott? If I could, if I could yep. uh, tag on to that line, Mr. Chair. In the event that that uh, override does not pass, we will be back here in a week or two. And that week or two will be, in the event it does not pass, looking for uh, reductions in the proposed budget. And that's really important to bear in mind. The framework of, we went in with $200,000, $144 gap. Uh, the framework for those reductions are a, a blended mix uh, from very little in the way of town side and uh, a fair amount in the way of elementary school side. That's kind of the blend that we have. Remember, we cannot cut assessments. We just, we cannot. They've been voted and those are assessed. Uh, frankly, one of, the, one of the reasons that they've been really passionate about not going to K through 12 at the at the at the school district because if it's simply another assessment, the town will have to either raise or it will dig deeper into administration, highway, fire, police, and you'll have fewer and fewer places to go. 
Remember that this year, through no fault of their own, the elementary school came with a significant increase in requests because of not expense growth, but the shift of revenues from choice to the town to be more predictable and more recurring. I think there's value in that, as has been said throughout a variety of meetings. In the event that the override fails, the vote fails, or in some people's minds succeeds, uh, the reductions will come largely from those two areas. Right. There's a $77,000 increase total for general government, 45000 of which was associated with salaries. As a personal right. Right. Personnel committee's recommendation. And the remainder is only growth in the elementary school. And it's not to say they did anything wrong. It's not to say there's villains or persecutors or victims. Right. But the reality is that's where it will fall. It will not fall on Frontier. It won't fall on debt. It won't fall on Franklin Tech. It won't fall on COG assessment. It won't fall on any of those places. Right. It will fall squarely on those two areas. Okay. Thank you, Scott. Um, select board updates for you just want to... We're just going to be scheduling a ditch meeting. Probably, can we maybe try for next Tuesday? They're full. They are. I had two inches yeah. of ditch in my basement. <laughs> <Did all weekend. laughs> squishy ditches. No, it's not. It's yes. not squishy it's when it's in my basement. No, it's a cement true. bathtub. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's that time of year. Town administrator updates. Um, I have a couple. I have a recommendation for the award for the wastewater treatment plant operation and maintenance to Warner Brothers LLC. Um, they were the only proposal that we received. I've uh, reviewed it and checked everything is in order. And if the board is so inclined. Um, okay, entertain a motion. Uh, motion. Second for discussion. S discuss. Uh, duration of the contract? It's 10 years. Uh, year one starts January 15th, 2020. Mm -hmm. And it goes through to. 2030, 20 right? Yep. So, uh, Sherry, as, as has in the contract that we're currently in, mm -hmm. there was an escalator that was associated with uh, some inflationary formula. But more importantly, there was of, of equal importance, not more importantly, of equal importance, there was a capital piece that was also raised. Is that consistent in this current contract offering? Yep. Okay. I think that's important, Mr. Chair, because mm -hmm. The you, can, you, can, you can run it and run it and run it, and then it's broken. Yep. You go, ah, oh, damn it. So you got to maintain it. Right. I, I think that's one of the things that we first did, Scott, is we, we put in a capital. Correct. It's the same framework as the Good. previous Because we, contract. up to that point, we never had, you know, wasn't never, there. there was, wasn't there. Right. So, the so now the, when we have a problem with a gearbox, the aeration, the aer the aeration gearbox, we have monies available to right. pay for it. Or so. NDT testing of yeah. lines or yeah. lift stations or yeah. et cetera. So, so uh, okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded for the award mm -hmm. of the uh, wastewater treatment operation and maintenance. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Sherry, please, uh, three zero. Sherry, recommendation building inspector. Um, yes, we had three candidates um, interview for that position. And the recommendation is for Tom Quinlan, who's uh, served the town as the alternate under Joe Fighting Kevitz. Okay. Um, so you're recommended, uh, Mr. Quinlan? Okay, so we have a motion made to uh, support the hiring of Mr. Quinlan to replace Joe Fighting Kevitz. Recommendation. I'll move. Second. And a motion made and seconded. Discussion. Any discussion? Uh, is this uh, an annual appointment or is this a multi-year contract? This is an annual, annual appointment. Annual appointment. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Actually, we have to redo them again in June, right? I think uh, this, technically. I, I think I, I would hope that the way the language for the employment agreement is that it would be currently acting as assistant and it would be consistent upon the July first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm gonna do it then. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay, we have a motion made and seconded to uh, apply Mr. Quinlan for the remainder of this 
fiscal year. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Three zero. Congratulations, new uh, building commissioner. Thank you. Three removal, relocation, sun on public library. Um, we have uh, the tree that was um, gifted in memory of one of the um, library patrons. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a request to move that tree and relocate it to the park area. I believe they're going to find a location tomorrow for that tree. Um, yeah, do you want me to speak yeah, to the location? Yeah, so um, we, Carlos and Taylor Davis and I walked the property and some time ago, Tom, you had suggested that we start, um, that we need to kind of define better the boundary between the park and these um, properties on School Street and um, that we start a sort of memories area there like put uh, memorial tree plantings um, it, it'd be nice there. if we had like a memorial lane you know people yeah. wanted to put it and they want to donate yes. benches or a tree um, that we we had a place so we could, it could be a point of reflection sure um, yeah I don't know how many we can we 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 um, there's a there's a kind of a junky tree that's mm -hmm. coming back there that Carlos and Taylor both thought should be cut back and then we flagged, um, you know, for, for a big substantial tree, they need to be about 40 feet apart, so that we, we flagged two spots for two trees along there. Um, there might, we might be able to get another one. Um, but, um, so we, yeah? No, go ahead. So we, we um, they were suggesting, um, or Carlos and Taylor thought, um, that would be a good place to put this tree. Now, um, George this morning wasn't so he he wasn't as so comfortable with that location, um, and had some recollections about the person who donated it. You know, wanting to be kind of in the center of things. I happen to know the person who donated it. I know the person who's in whose memory yeah, it was. Yeah. For, um, so I, I, I'm call, I'm trying to get a hold of her, the woman who donated it, and Good. just check with her and that. see, um, um, you know, how she feels I, about where it should go. Yeah. I think it was done. I thought the donation was done before the park was. It, it was conceptual, but it was more on paper than now. Now you can actually see it starting to. So yeah, I think yeah. A, yeah, and I actually read today the letter that she wrote with it, and it said, you know wherever works for the landscaping that's what she said in the letter Perfect. Um, yeah. you know, wherever works yeah sure yeah I, I don't have a problem with that Scott if I could mr. chair in the texture of the landscape it's just changing out here mm -hmm. there is a, a, a much broader mix of hard surfaces semi permeable surfaces and natural surfaces so is the tree location that we're talking about conducive to the root structure of that kind of tree mm -hmm. or is it too close to hard or impermeable surfaces? It's not close to hard surfaces Good. at all. It's, yeah. 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 You gotta ask that question. We're not, right. we're not no putting it in, in right. the middle of the new uh, the new uh, parking lot. <laughs> well, that, that you know, stranger things have happened. Again, <laughs> no. I'm only asking because it would be nice if it didn't have roots. But I don't. Uh, <laughs> one one other area that I, I wanted to talk to Carlos about is you know between the volleyball court, there, there's like a nice sort of picnic area mm -hmm. now, and and like we. The, that might be a good spot for a tree also to give shade and we're getting a picnic table for nice. that area and, um, okay. so, Great. Um, anyway t uh, Carlos and George and I are meeting tomorrow morning and just gonna make a final decision on um, okay. where it goes. type of tree I was just gonna well, ask that's a maple. Sugar maple. it's a sugar maple oh, mm -hmm. I see the uh, correspondence yeah. sugar maple yeah so that that so explains so the need you to could move have, it. you yeah. could have you could have uh, 80 by 100 foot canopy in the grand scheme of things of roots right. that run an acre it's a big tree okay yeah yeah that's why um it's it, it the i guess they had a an arborist out and the arborist said that it was It'll, threatening the, 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 the elm. magnificent american elm there right. so, yeah. okay thank you <clears throat> all right so where's the money come from right. there's some money in the yeah. tree account if which tree account town the town tree account 
I, I could support that as long as it's not going to take away any money from the treating of the three primary elms that we already support. Sure. Uh, again, Mr. Chair, we, we've, yeah. we've only had that account drawn down for treatment mm -hmm. of those three trees. So this as long is in the budget. I the understand. Line item, but yeah. Okay. So again, the tree warden has an account yep. specific to trees, and there are three elms that we treat annually that are magnificent. And I think it's important that we don't take away from that to ensure that this tree okay. gets moved. Good point, Scotty. Yeah. We are lucky with those. I'll check on that and make sure. Yep. Thank you. Um, and then the other tree, uh, Greenfield Savings Bank, um, has sent a letter to the town and they are gifting a tree um, to the town and we wanted to use that in the park if that's That'd be perfect. Okay. That's a great idea. Yeah. Move to accept. Second. Motion made and seconded to accept the gift from Greenfield Savings of place into our our Riverside Park. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Three zero Sherry. That's an American L. One and a half to two inch caliper. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, nice. And they're going to plant it and everything for us. So. Excellent. Anything else? Um, that's all I have. All right. Sarah, you want to talk to us about a number park of, benches? A number of things. There is, and Sherry suggested no, I. No, park <laughs> says Sarah Schneider <laughs> bench. Damn it. Just one thing. <laughs> okay, that is yeah. about these um, um, two plastic benches that are down here. I'm asking yeah. to have those declared surplus, and I understand that they already were surplus <laughs> before they even got here. They're misshapen and, you know, kind of... It's a benefit of recycled materials. <laughs> So you say it's important you say plastic benches. It wasn't simply extruded out. Those were donated and they were recycled materials. They were state of the art at the time. Yeah. And now they're so much better state of the art. <laughs> yeah. Repurposed. Repurposed, right. exactly. There might be so some do you other. Want, do, you want to, do you want to call them so surplus? I mean, we never bit. bought them. Yeah. That's fair. Well, that's yeah. true. We can vote a disposition and just be done with it. Right. Okay. Surplus says there's a whole I bunch of rules. Sure well, I, I told you where they came from. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would I would I would call and ask because he may want to take them up to the town park or something. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Great point. Okay. Yep. So just just do it that way. Perfect. Okay. So relocate existing benches. That makes sense. It, no, it was a gener it was a generous offer when it when we had it because we didn't have anything. So Correct. Now we, uh, we just so ask. I'll check with him and then just check with him and, and he may want to, mm -hmm. okay. and, and George may George may have to you know we may have it taken up to the town park or something. Okay. Do you want, okay. Do you want a motion for disposition? Or? No. Okay. Okay. Next. So um, you may have noticed a lot of activity around here. Um, uh, oh, back here. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Everything's going going well. Um, and we're um did the dreidel survive the high water mark yes the yeah. dreidel thank goodness survived. <laughs> i think it's important to bear in mind you it know, didn't we, get it didn't get up to the dreidel level yet good luck uh. good point <laughs> but, you know we, we're we tie my boat off here well we're, 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 we're dealing with what the noaa says is near 30 years of high water mark yep. so as we have gone through the design and the installation process of a river walk, it's important to bear in mind, those initial surveys have played out, right? Yeah. We're not at a hundred year watermark, maybe we'll be fishing off the drain in a hundred years, that's yes. okay. <laughs> yeah. But the reality is, pathway, those kinds of construction areas have certainly survived uh, this high water season. And it's so it's far. quite high. So far, I hear you. Right, so far. Um, so we're planning an opening celebration for July 13th, and we've booked the Neilds um, to play. Yeah, nice. I know um, them. It's going to be an all-day um, uh, affair with activities throughout the whole park. Nice. There's going to be um, a ribbon cutting in the morning, um, a kayak, um, a group kayak outing led by the Connecticut River Conservancy. Nice. Um, yeah. Uh, and then a lot of you know games, guided walks. We're going to have a um, Native Native American guide to to um, um, 
talk about. That be May 13th? July 13th. July 13th? Yeah. Oh, and here's a little tchotchke, little mag, re yeah. refrigerator okay. magnet nice. for each Love of Nice. Love them. You. Thanks so much. Yes. Appreciate yeah. that. You'll see the signs going up pretty soon in yeah. a couple weeks. Um, yeah, so... Um, yeah. So um, could I ask now a we're, question about timing? Oh, yeah. Will we be complete with the end of School Street and the work at no, the manhole? Not the manhole, but the commitment that we made for the green space and the termination at the end of School Street. Oh, we're coordinating as, as, that as with part Robin. Of, as part Chris, of the yeah. as part of our mm -hmm. uh, part of our land swap. Yep. yep. I think that's important to bear yep. in mind that that continues to move forward. We have yep. really generous residents. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, okay, so now we've hit um, a snag. Um, well, we've hit several snags, but um, that's challenges, yes, opportunities, yes. Challenge. Yes. Uh, opportunities. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Here. <laughs> so, um, as you know, um, or I don't know if you noticed, the the pole, the electrical pole, is gone. Mm -hmm. um, and part of the our commitment, um, part of our obligation with the park grant is to not have have overhead wires in the conservation space, yeah. area. And we had this wonderful budget surplus because of the state coming in and helping us with the parking lot. So we were able to afford taking down that pole. However, <laughs> they got, they took down the pole and started to do the work and then the electrician said, well, I can't. Well, I, I, it's going to cost $30 to have two tests done for asbestos. Uh-huh. Oh. And, 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 yeah. and, and my, my, my guess is, is that we, we, we know we have a, it's non fry if you're looking at non friable potential asbestos, so that means it needs to be two tests done. Each test is about fifteen dollars. Okay. Sarah's gonna make a call tomorrow okay. about that. Excellent. My guess is that it's not is not asbestos because of the yellow when we did the uh, upgrades for the um, um, handicapped accessibility of the town hall back about what, fifteen years ago, twelve years ago, ten 15, years ago. 15. Yeah. They, they, they all blend they together did, at this point, but it's they did, a, they did a significant amount of cutting and thing inside of here. The asbestos laws were in effect back then. We didn't have a problem. Oh, okay. so, so I think it's just two tests. I think you have a, well, there's just two tests that need to be done. Sherry's going to try to schedule those Excellent. tomorrow. Excellent. Um, and he mentioned lead also. Well, that is that, I, I don't know anything about, is that something that gets no, tested? That would have to be paint but i'd be shocked if that's the case yeah for the amount of coring and drilling could, could i uh, so with respect to that install with res with uh area lighting um i know there's an install that's going to go to a pedestal kind of service i totally get that supporting the electrical infrastructure for the the the, the fields mm -hmm. could i could i suggest that or could i ask that there's a, a comprehensive review about area lighting that is the the building proper the integration with the library and we know we have parking and etc I, I i ask this only in that mr chair we um, do uh, due diligence to ensure that for the sake of efficiency we don't compromise the the entire aesthetic there's, there's really good lighting and there's really bad lighting. And so I'd ask that before we go hog wild with a simple direct replacement for a kind of area and we look at, well, what is this building, its perimeter, not, not tied to the, the, the project we're talking about, but tied to the front of the space, the sides of the space for safety, right. the more intimate spaces that are the garden area out here by the library i would i would hate to have you know a couple of i would hate to have a short view on that aesthetic at this point having spent a lot of energy and effort on a beautiful park facility parking area and turn it into parking lot lighting when it's not necessarily integrated to the remainder space, whether it's the entry, the Veterans Memorial, the integration on the west side to the library yeah. or out there. So I'd be happy to participate in that to the extent that I can, mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily on the, um, not necessarily to 
sidetrack the current effort. But you know, an area light on a pole was put up for simple security. Now we have a very different space. So let's take a look at that lighting in general and see if we can, we can collaborate to do it uh, correctly. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. I love it. It's like lighting, lighting your home. It makes such a Again, big difference. Oh, it makes a huge difference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, there's plenty of examples of like, so so really bad sure. lighting. I've Scott, seen. are you saying that we need to do that before we finish the electrical? No, no. There's still power's got to go out there. Oh, okay. I, I was just talking. I think I saw in the change order some area about replacing that light from a building's perspective, looking back out. I don't know if I pursue that entirely without uh, a full review of the whole space oh, have, and, and developing some measure of town commitment. Is that the light that George was talking about putting on the building? Side of the building, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay, all right, yeah. okay. So, um, uh, and, and with respect to that one change order, that one element of that change order, uh -huh. I, I'd, um, I'd ask for a pause on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. And right. say, well, wait a minute. Let's let's look at it more holistically. Yeah. And throwing the light up on the side of the building. Yeah, I know that um, George added that on. Yeah. Sort of the, um, okay. Now, S Scott, would you be able to come at five o'clock tomorrow? Tomorrow's Tuesday, right? Tuesday. Carlos said he. Could I could do five. At five. Oh. Yeah, I can do five, but I have to be out by six. Oh, that's fine. Okay. I don't want to stay later yeah. than that. But, <laughs> but then you can t if then you can tell Carlos because Carlos also, I mean, the Berkshire Design got the yeah. contract for the school street sure. design. Sure. And again, yeah. there, yeah. there's a great example so where you could take a simple element and go, ugh, why do we do that? Yeah. And then a year later, go, well, tick, 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 tick. This makes much yeah, more sense. Yeah, well, he's done the master plan for this, and he even did the planning for the library, I think. Right. So it would be perfect right. if you could right. tell him, uh, don't, don't, tr no, trust suggest. Me to, right. <laughs> to translate it. Just yeah. if yeah. you can tell him tomorrow, yeah, five, that'd be 5 great. 5 p.m. You can shoot, yeah. me, have, shoot me a note in the morning. 5 o'clock. Yeah. And shoot you an email in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we can um, just look at, in, in in case yeah. if the asbestos thing doesn't work out, what what our alternatives are? Um, but hopefully that, that would be great. Yeah, I think I think to, to, to Tom's point, Mr. Uh, the chair's point, that, that those tests are pretty straightforward, and this okay. building this building has been gone through. It's been poked and prodded a lot. Okay. <laughs> so. okay. All right. That would be great. Um, do you all have any other questions about the park or the construction? Or no, at the moment, no. Um, it's looking have, good. Yeah, I love it. It's um, nice to see the, you guy the got, progress. You guys got that email yeah. from the the um, the ninety two year old gentleman. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. that was nice. So wonderful. I just talked today uh, to a friend who's a nurse who's brought a client down there, and oh, nice. uh, you know, uh, you know, and uh, so like the accessibility is yeah. really a big deal. I'd, Second season, if I could, Mr. Chair, ask a question. Second season after the invasives um, yeah. effort. Mm -hmm. How is the knotweed? It's almost it's almost non-existent. I don't see really? it coming up. Yeah, Good. we'll need to. It's um, tenacious. We'll need to sort of spot. Yep. Uh, um, and I I, I actually walked the yep. the I got um, our U.S. Fish and Wildlife um, partner Dave Sagan out with Carlos and we walked it and we talked about it. Good. And, He's very pleased. Um, he wants to wait um, a season mm -hmm. to see what native plants are going to move in right. yep. um, before we go and plant anything. We are going to plant some stuff um, to provide a screening for the, um, the, the old toll house mm -hmm. because we took down all of their screening. So between yep. the Fish and Wildlife is going to provide the plants. They're nice. buying them for us. Um, um, so on that bank, um, above the boat, boat mm -hmm. ramp. We're gonna put some plants in there, but otherwise he wants to wait and just kind of see what. Makes sense, and see how it settles out. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, a couple, yeah. a couple of seasons before that knotweed is finally drawn back and then you can yeah. put more natives inside there. Yeah. And again, I would, if I could, Mr. Chair, just reinforce the point. We have, the town has a commitment to uh, the residents at the end of School Street for yeah. that head spot. We get that work done. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, and that's just going to, it's not going to cost the town anything because right. they're buying the, U.S. Fish and Wildlife is buying the plants and we're just going to have a volunteer work day to plant them. So, Brilliant. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
And I just had one other comment on what you guys were talking about before the um, acoustics in mm. the um, uh, gymnasium, Oof. which is the absolute worst acoustics I've ever experienced in my <laughs> entire life. No, yeah. like they're just unbearable to me. Um, it hurts almost. Um, and I, I've been thinking for quite a few years, why don't we have the town meeting in the cafeteria of the school? It would be worth looking at the numbers of how many people Good. come because I've gone to a lot of things. They fit the whole school in the cafeteria or half that's, or they do. Yeah, that's true. And it would be worth looking at the numbers of, you know, yeah, average capacity. of how many come because there weren't that many people. We could easily have fit all those people in the cafeteria and the acoustics are like a million times better. There is a good um, point. There is, there's, if I could, Mr. Chair. There's, there's, there's a trap of posting for town meeting for the entire town, having one article show up that's really impassioned, and then you get yeah. all, of, all of the available voters and you can't accommodate. And right. then you have to postpone and relocate. And it's, it's, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. I'm with you on the acoustics bit. Although, you, could you move it? Well, I was going to say, luckily, if we had to, we could just move it over to the gym. Correct. Take a, take a brief recess and right. everybody recess grab a and chair over. and head over. But yeah. So you, you, you raise a really good point. In particular, uh, this year, again, if I could, Mr. Chair, continue. We have, in years past, had a monitor behind us. In the last two years, I don't think we've one. had a monitor behind us. And I'm, I'm empathetic to people in the audience, especially at the back, which I yelled at this yeah. last meeting, like, move forward. And it's like, no, speaking to the mic. It's like, oh, okay, I could probably do that a little bit better. But for us, inside that block frame, we couldn't hear everything was like moving that. forward yeah. acoustically. And so without that monitor, and again, the the director at FCAT was really clear. He's just so apologetic. It's like, this will be fixed. We yeah. got this. Well, that will help you guys up on the stage, right. but you're like a you know minority of the attendees, you know that, and it's like ugh, it's, it's almost hard. like we need a surround sound set, so two in the front, two in the back, pointing in yeah, like that sure. to get the That's people right. in the back. But the thing, and the thing is, even if you have all that, there's such a um, it's a big space to fill it up is. with. Kind yeah, of and I, I mean, I've been in there like with a band, and it's just I have to you have to leave. Like it's just it just is. It, it's not like the frontier auditorium. You've got. Nicer speakers pointing down. Yeah, but it's so we like even if you have speakers, you're still going to have all that bounce around and like um, uh, metallic kind yeah. of reverberation. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think it would really be worth because it, it's like the cafeteria is a much friendlier space mm -hmm. too. That's it's true. It's not like yeah. a big like cavern. It's that's more. We can uh, open up a concession stand during the <laughs> you, you, really, you could really think out of the box if I could. <laughs> Right, <laughs> Mr. Let's, Chair, you could think out of the box and have town meeting at the town park. <laughs> right. there you go. Oh yeah, that would make for a short meeting when it's a fifty-degree night. <laughs> <laughs> or the mosquitoes. Or the mosquitoes. Yeah, mosquitoes. Anyway, yeah. but your, your, your point's well taken. Yeah. All right, that's all, all right. for me. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> um, resignation, Mr. Chair. We have a letter in front of us uh, to Chief uh, Demetropolis. Accept this letter as notice of my resignation from my position as clerk for the Sunderland Police Department. My last day of employment will be 5 10 19. I ask that you request payout of 18. Anyway, close out hours. Uh, sincerely, uh, Michelle Duguay. Okay, motion. Uh, motion. I'll uh, second. Motion made, seconded to uh, accept resignation of Michelle Duguay as a police clerk. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 3 0. Anything else? You all set? That's it. All right, so just a reminder, um, annual town elections will be Saturday at the elementary school. Um, hopefully, it will probably be one of our last elections at the elementary school. Correct. That's um, the goal of the town clerk. Yep. Right. And the, that town, the, we're going to work with the library to move it to the library, so uh, it'll be there are a lot of reasons why we, why it's going to be a better location. Um, so we're going to work on that. Um, so I, I would I would I would su um, just like to remind everyone to uh, uh, you know, take a few moments and, and go vote. It's, it's a very important time. Anything else? No. Not hearing anything. I'll accept a motion to um, adjourn. So moved. Second.
Uh, one thing before, th Sherry, thank you for uh, assistant town clerking at the town That's meeting. That's right. The other day on Friday night. All those in favor of adjournment, please signify by saying aye. Aye. aye.